Hey there, guys. So in just a little bit here, we're going to go live and we are going to talk about uh, the ter- the recent Terrence Howard um, interview that he did. And, you know, there's a lot of hubbub about it because he was discussing, you know, all about how, um, you know, that he'd been done wrong and not paid properly. Just, you know, he was paid a third, if not less than a third per episode than some counterparts that he had on a, another network, but that was in the same kind of like production package. And there was a lot going on and people really had a big issue with that as they should, but they missed all of the metaphysical, like the metaphysical and kind of some of the, shall we say, spiritual truths, the mathematical truths, the physical truths, the how he, this is, he is probably the most brilliant mind that we have right now today. And he's challenging how we've actually looked at our world through the, the, the lens of a very linear matrix rather than truly this extraordinary and quantum lens. So I hope you'll join me um, right here. And while we get into this discussion, it'll be live here and on YouTube and all over the place. So please join me and you can actually join the panel too. We'll see you soon. Bye. Are you ready for some real thought provoking conversations that lead to spiritual wisdom and discovery to provide you with clear direction on every area of your life? Well, sit back and relax. You've made it to the right place. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Heart of Inspiration. Hey, hello, 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 everyone. How are y'all? Can you all hear me? Um, Holler if you hear me. Let me know that you hear me. Hopefully the live is working over on the other side. I'm trying to make sure that it is. On Rumble, I should be live on Rumble. Yep, looks like I am. So if you guys can give me some hearts and let me know that you can hear me, I am not sure if all of the settings are working properly. It looks like they are. Everything should be working. Um, I'm I'm wa- wanting to let a few more people get into the room because this is going to be a very important and interesting conversation that we're having today. Um, this is a conversation that, hey, t- hey, Tasha. Okay, cool, cool. Let me know, drop some hearts in the chat if you can hear me. Um, I, we have been talking about, or there have been various people talking about this Terrence Howard video, um, this Terrence Howard um, interview that occurred. It actually occurred on, May, March 30th. And it took people a hot second to even to really start to discuss it. And then when I saw it referenced, um, I'll be honest with you, what usually was being referenced, to be quite frank, was the fact that he was wearing a wig. And we'll see why. <laughs> and that he was dressed like he was in the 70s. And I, and then the next thing that was being discussed was the fact that he... um that he let it out that he hadn't gotten properly paid by, um, you know, CAA. So that CAA, we'll hear a little bit of that. We'll probably scooch by it, but, and in one of these future discussions about this, but that CAA basically had made sure that he and some of the other um, actors and actresses that were on Empire um, and CAA is an agency, is a management agency. And what I think they're production or management, something like that. Anyway, long story less long, they were only getting paid 325, I want to say, thousand dollars per episode. And here you have Oscar winners and 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 Tony winners and you know, all sorts of you know, Emmy winners, acclaimed actors and actresses on this um show. And when I did not realize that when that came out, 
Um, it was right around the same time that Big Bang Theory came out, and they only had when I, if I remember correctly, it was only the, the only two people I recognized on the show. Well, only one person really was the young man that had to play David on Roseanne, and then one of the other girls I recognized. Anyway, they didn't have the star power. They weren't getting the level of ad revenue and all of that. And um, the, those those um, actors were getting paid like millions of dollars per episode. It was really, really ridiculous. So everybody was talking about that. So I end up, it's, it came across my YouTube feed because I've been studying, as I mentioned the other day, I've been studying things like um, the Anunnaki and I've been studying comedic spirituality and a few other items and uh, topics of discussion. And so then this popped up and um, I watched it. When I tell you this was an hour and 40 some odd minutes of gold far and away beyond those couple of minutes that that was discussed Beyond, like I act, and I, this is no shade to anybody that's already covered this. I actually was almost had a little secondhand embarrassment because I'm like, here this man is. And to me, he is a modern day, what we would have called a Galileo or a Newton or a Tesla. He is a modern day savant he is he I, I am floored by the capacity of this man's brain and the the depth of his intelligence and his ability to see into the world in such a different way um I, i'm floored but i'm also dismayed that instead of paying attention to the deep, 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 deep things that he discussed, um, we wanted to pay more attention to the fact that he was underpaid. Like that's not the main thing that was stated, and you can you'll even see in this in this video in this discussion in this interview that um, yeah, this wasn't the main thing. Um, he talks about this stuff because he has to. But it's almost, I don't know if you all have, you know, if you've ever had the opportunity to sit down with a highly intelligent person and discuss things um, and discuss, you know, like their philosophical beliefs or, um, you know, anything like that. And you ha you're having a discussion and all of a sudden you start asking about like what they thought about the ball game last night. And you're just kind of looking at them like, what? You know what I mean? Like they will, you know, they'll give you this look like, or you ask a question that's so ancillary to what they legitimately were like talking about, the meat of what they're talking about. And they just kind of look at you like, oh, okay. You know, it's one of those things. And so, and he's so gracious, just so wonderful. So we're going to chit chat about that um, tonight. And this is going to be part one, because again, it's an hour and 42 minutes. I'm not thinking I'm going to get through it. Tasha said she didn't want you to I brought it up. It was very interesting and eye-opening, wasn't it? It was very, very, very good. Risa Teresa just signed with them. Oh, with CAA. Well. Anyway, I mean, hey, Red Vada, a lot of people have. I'm not gonna denounce them or anything like that. That's not my appeal. It's not my issue. Um, hey, Coach Leslie. All right, guys. I do not. I have not had my air on all day. It's it's in the 80s here, but it's very nice in the house. It's not um, overbearing, but it is getting a little warm because I've got hot lights on. So I'm going to play a little music. I'm going to go dark. Um, and then let me get over here to this here. We're going to bring this up. Um, while I'm sharing this here, let me pre. Uh, why don't I have anybody here yet? So we're going to do this. I'm also, let me, I'm going to drop the link early. Let me drop the link early. Okay. Okay, want to be a part of the discussion. 
And the re oh, it would help if I was if I didn't have all caps. I'm not shouting at you guys. I just have all caps on and I don't feel like retyping this right now. Um, the reason why I'm dropping this early is because this is a discussion. I I, I want us to really dig down deep into this. I don't want this to be a situation where we're not digging deep. Um, let me, and I, and I want you all to be a part of it, a part of this discussion, big, big time. Okay. Um, because this really is for all of us. I hope that this can happen. Hello over on Rumble as you guys begin to come in. So I just dropped the link over on Rumble. I don't know that I can see your chats over here. I'm not sure over on the stream yards of it all, but um, you should still be able to join with that link. Okay, guys. Hey, Lee, how are you? How are you, dear? Okay, so that showed up here. Okay, I don't know, child. All right, let me turn my fan on. Let me turn my fan on, y'all, because, child, I'm going to get hot up in here. It's getting hot in here. And I'm not taking off all my clothes. That much I can tell you straight up right now. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure this is going to look correct, and we will make it bigly. And um, you guys don't need to see everything that I've got going on here. Okay. And also, I don't have a fair use, but this is, I put it in the description. So this is fair use, just so you guys are aware. And please feel free to give, um, to get, I think you guys can see what I mean, to give Daphne a follow and a like. Um, this was, this is on Daphne Wynn's channel. She's been doing this straight talk conversation for a long time now. Um, she's been, it was on, a, she's in Atlanta. It was a radio show. So she's been doing this for quite some time. Um, and we just really love the fact that she was very willing to have this conversation with our dear friend, um, Mr. Terrence. So I really, really love this. So this is fair use. Um, so we, this is commentary, education, and so on. And that's what we're doing right now. So guys, I'm going to put on just a little music. Let me turn on my, actually, I can start playing this while I go dark for just a second. Hey, Sabby Bean, how are you? Right. So you guys are going to hear exactly why he, um, is in this garb right now. So here we go, guys. Straight talk with Daphne to me. I am so excited to give you another. Can you guys hear that, by the way? I want to be sure you guys can hear it. Is it still, I'm going to play it a little bit longer. Is it still, is, let me know if it's low, if I need to turn it up. I have an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the one and only Terrence D. Howard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say the whole middle name. I like it though. You like, I like it? it? I like Deshaun. Deshaun. I like Deshaun yeah, too. I came with Deshaun. She did. That's awesome. Because mm -hmm. you're special. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I was on a little bus. Not the short one. Though. I was on a short bus. Not the short little yeah, bus. Yeah, when I was in the second grade, um, because I was saying, wow, that's the prettiest color blue I've ever heard. And <laughs> um, the teacher was like, you can't, you know, colors don't have. So I was like, yes, they do. They're like, no, no, they don't. And they ended up sending me to a remedial school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to kick this, oops, we, I'm, that's okay. We're kicking this off right away with him talking about colors having sounds. And that's why, let me put on the closed caption too, that'll help. And that's why um, they sent, they put him in remedial school and thought that he needed our version of an IEP today because he said colors have sounds. Here we go. For about a year. And I was just like, nah, the people that were there were so incredible, the kids, because they saw things differently. Right. Yeah. You know, but what it turned out is I had, um, everyone's born with synesthesia. Mm -hmm. And that's just the ability to have more than one, um, one stimuli can affect multiple um, 
receptors. Right. And so sound or color will color will have a sound or shapes will have a taste, mm -hmm. all of those things. And every child is born with it. Right. The problem is, you know, the first thing a kid wants to do, he wants to put things in his in his mouth because he has um, an idea or an expectation of what that's supposed to taste like, and that informs him. Mm -hmm. But when we don't allow them to put things in their mouth and we don't talk to them about the relationship between light and color or sound and tone and matter and shape, mm -hmm. you know, it dies as a result of atrophy. But everyone has that ability to where if they see a color, they should like the color blue is like the key of G to me, you know, or the, the color key of G. G. Yes. Yeah, so what does the key of G sound like? The key of G. Um, because I know you're musically inclined, so yeah, we split out real quick. Like 192 hertz. Wow. You yeah, know? Okay. That's okay. a low register. Yeah. So did y'all catch the fact I am gonna have to start and stop this, y'all. I don't mean to be I don't mean to be rude, but you know, I don't want to get struck. Hopefully, Miss Daphne won't do that. And hopefully, Daphne, if you do ever ever end up seeing this video, this was an amazing interview. And if you ever want to come on, I would love to discuss with you um, this this interview itself, what you got out of it um, from spending this time with Terrence Howard and um, and so on, because I think this was a fabulous interview, just so you know. Anyway, but do you notice, like, she wanted him to sing, because she knows he can sing. <laughs> and he just, skirt. he was like, okay, it was 192 hertz. Like, I love how when he does not want to, like, dive like that's not the direction he wants to go and in any interview in any time period you see him he like literally has this beautiful gentle way of bringing you right back to exactly where he wants you so that he can get this information out i know that you have this passion for the insight and the revelation that you've been given about an array of things from geometry to physics to science but I want to backtrack really quickly because I know most people want to hear a couple things about what you're doing with the wig while we're here. We're on set. This ain't no wig. In Atlanta. Atlanta. That's your hair. That's what you're going to get. That's your soul. This kind of like Richie's hair. This kind of like That's Richie. exactly what I was thinking, right? Yeah, no, we're doing a film. Um, and I thank you guys for coming Absolutely. here to set. Absolutely. Thank um, you for having me. Taking yeah. the time. It's, um, we're, it's me. It's Kevin Hart, Don Cheeto, mm -hmm. um, Sam Jackson, myself, and a number of incredible actors. But we're doing a thing called Fight Night. And that's okay. the night that Muhammad Ali fought Jerry Quarry, mm -hmm. you know, and um, there's a little robbery that takes place. There's a little robbery? Just a little. Who's on the robber side? Oh, I don't know. Somebody with a wig on? Some bad people. Everybody got a wig on. Really? <laughs> Everybody got a wig on. <laughs> So what's your character's name in this movie? It's Cadillac Richie. Cadillac Richie. Yeah. Okay, Cadillac Richie. Yeah, Cadillac okay. like that. How is this different from any of the other characters you played? Mm. I don't I think Cadillac is a bit of a, a sociopath. Oh wow. I've only okay. played a sociopath, I think, once in a movie called um with Andre 3000, mm -hmm. Idlewild. All right. You see, I've watched you for a long time, Spats. And you taught me that when opportunity not, you said the smart man answers. See, that was some really good advice. That was the mm -hmm. closest I got to uh, okay. a, a social path, mm -hmm. you know. But Cadillac is a little more fun. Okay. A little okay. more fun. What was that preparation like preparing? Because I've heard you say a couple of things in other interviews. And I want to ask you about that because I, I, I did some acting and studying mm -hmm. acting. And you said something I've never really heard a lot of actors say about the process of acting. And you said that sometimes when you walk off, they walk off with your clothes. Technically, what it was, was this was from the Oxford. In 2019, he was in front of the Oxford, uh, Oxford College over in England. And I saw that, uh, spe that talk as well. And I think it was that one, yes. And the quote really was that as an actor, I think it was that one, but... As an actor, your character puts your body on as if they are, the, it is their clothing. And so even though the character ends, you still keep a piece of them along with you because you've become a part of their clothing. Their DNA, in an essence, is on you, you know? Um Hey, Sister Michelle. Yep, it is distracting, but you know what? We're going to ride through it because the, what he gives here is amazing. What he gives here is amazing. And actually, I thought about it 
And I thought, you know what? If I wanted to hide in plain sight, I would do what he's doing. Not that he's hiding, but I'm just saying. Anyway, you'll get used to it after a while. <laughs> Here we go. Now he's going to talk about this. You guys, this is a very, this was deep. When I heard this part, this was deep. Can you explain that? Well, as an actor, as um, you're, you're more like a medium, mm -hmm. you know, when you really get that, you, you know, you go into this zone and you really divorce yourself of who you are mm -hmm. and you just become a garment that something else puts on. Now, right. a lot of people sit up there and do impersonations of other folks, mm -hmm. you know, instead of allowing that spirit, you know, but I sit up and I'll pray for a little bit and go in a dark place, mm -hmm. um, go in the bathroom, turn off the lights, look in the mirror. Um, we'll have the light on at first and then after one minute, turn the light off and, you know, and search until you find, see your own glow, your own aura, mm -hmm. and then you watch it change. Wow. And it's a scary thing yeah. because you'll feel like some hands are on you wow. and you lose a little bit of control of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you stay with it, you know, you'll, you'll be inhabited by mm -hmm. something and then you'll walk out and the character wow. with you and you got to know how to, to say goodbye to it. Wow. Okay. Can we stop there for just one second? While we're here, I want y'all to tell me in the chat. And again, I pinned this to the top. I pinned the, um, I pinned the uh, the the link to the top if, if anybody wants to come up on the panel. Can we talk about this concept of willingly, willingly allowing a, be, yes, Natasha, becoming a portal. I found that interesting. So he is saying he's a medium. Hey, Justin, Jasmine, how you doing? Yeah, that was crazy, wasn't it? So... Can, I want to, I, I really want, I'm, I know we're we going to get through it. I swear to God. When you, those of you, I don't know how many of you all are mediums in the, in the chat or ever have experienced mediumship. Um, if any of you all that are in the chat or even when you're watching the replay gang, when you're watching, let me check over here and see if we have anybody over here. Uh, okay. Um, when you're when you are a medium as I'm a medium if you've ever in fact spoken in front of the church okay if if you've given a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom we talk about this that's one of the gifts of the spirit if you've ever spoken in tongues in front of the church um if you you know and then there was an interpretation then given um you have operated in the gift of mediumship. Okay, you have operated in the gift of mediumship. In that moment, what you are saying, a true medium, well, okay, there's different levels, there's different ways to be a medium, okay? There are some mediums, like um, my Reiki master, um, Jeremy Anniker, who's back in Wisconsin. Hi, if you're watching. Um, he channels I'm an ascendant master. It's kind of a group called Rama, R-A-M-M-A-H. And when he is channeling, he literally, he himself, well, he'll tell you, he, a matter of fact, I should have him on soon. He goes to this other place, like he goes to kind of a happy place. Sometimes he's fishing. Sometimes he's just sitting in a park. Sometimes he's doing whatever. But for the entire time that he is channeling, and this could be going on for hours, two, three hours. For the entire time that he's channeling, when he's gone into trance and channeled, Rama is in, not only inhabiting, we'll just say, but utilizing his body for movement. So he, at the end of these things, when I first started going to these uh, channeling sessions back in, I want to say 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. Um, at the end of the session, you know, we it would be about 10, 15, sometimes it'd be as many as 20 to 30 people in this room. He would literally go to eyes closed, eyes closed the entire time. He would walk in the circle because we'd all sit in a circle. Some people have been sitting, you know, cross-legged inside the circle. 
Some of us would be sitting on chairs. Sometimes there'd be a second row of chairs. And he would go to each person, lay hands on each person. He never tripped. He never stepped on anybody. Never missed their head. Like he would literally lay hands on each person and would speak a word, right? Would speak whatever Rama was channeling to that individual. We could ask him questions and so on. Um, and he would answer. Wouldn't be him. Voice changed everything. There have been times where as a medium that has happened when I allow it to happen to me. Um, I don't do that much anymore because I just choose not to, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but when I was, even when I was in the church, when I would give stand up in front of the entire congregation and give a word, my voice would not be mine. My voice had a different tone, a different timbre, a different cadence. People would say that when they're sitting in the congregation and looking at me, my aura literally, you know, I would glow. We didn't call it an aura because, you know, that's demonic. Um, but my I would glow, right? It, it, there would be like a, 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 a light sometimes surrounding me. So there's different ways to be a medium. What he's saying is he's literally choosing. Now, I find this also interesting. Understand that he is acting out written word. It's not like these characters truly, he's not doing a biopic, especially in this case, or in any other case that I know of. I mean, I'm sure he's probably done biopics and I'm sure y'all will tell me, but he's taking on the aspects of the written words that someone else so this character lives in somebody else's brain and somebody else's essence. They have created this character and he's taking those words and deriving the frequency, the essence of that character and allowing that frequency, he says spirit, but allowing that frequency to inhabit him. That's deep. I want y'all just to sit with that for a second. That's deep. Yep, Red Violet sure is a, a medium. He did say he was. It's insane. Sister Michelle says, many people are mediums. Absolutely. What do you call it when black people talk to other black people like they're possessed with the spirit of Miss Catherine? Who's Miss Catherine? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know who that is, Sister Michelle. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I, I just wanted you, we're going to stop and start again. This is fair use. This is fair use. This is for commentary, education, and other such research purposes. Here we go. If you really want to yeah, get there, right, you know, yeah. a lot of people are afraid, mm -hmm. you know, to, to empty themselves and be filled up with something else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as an actor, you're an emotional prostitute. Wow. You know, you put on whatever you need for the job. Mm -hmm. Put on, you're turning a trick, you're turning an emotional trick. Wow. And it's no, nothing yeah. more glorious yeah. than that. Okay. So how do you balance the separation of who you really are? Or are they similar? No, no, no. <laughs> you, you, I mean, there's, you got to remember, we've been here since the very beginning, mm -hmm. you know, there, and there is no good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's just your perspective that you're sitting from. Is it beneficial for everyone around okay. or is it not? There's something that has to build up and there's something that needs to tear it down. Mm -hmm. You know, what we call the tearing of it down, we call that, we call it evil or bad, mm -hmm. but that's the process of magnetism mm -hmm. or radiation. Radiation tears apart that which was uh, concentrically brought together through mm -hmm. electric through electric potential and electric force. Electricity mm -hmm. is always seeking a higher pressure condition, trying to get to the center of the apex, whereas magnetism is spinning southwestern, trying to get out. And But the magnetism is necessary because unless it, it broke apart that which was connected together, you would never have any new material to rebuild again. And that's the breathing in and the breathing out of universal purpose. Okay, I, I, I need to stop that for a second. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know that. I had no, I, I, I had not know nothing of that. Are there two Terrence Howards? I don't know. I don't know. Um, sorry, Charlotte, I have no idea. Uh, there might be. I'm sure there's more than one. 
Um, so whenever you look him up, usually we go by Terrence D. Howard. That's what he usually says. No, the actor and the gentleman who speaks on metaphysics, this is one and the same. It's the same person. This is one and the same. That's why I wanted to show this. Okay, let me, I can we talk a little bit? Let me just rewind this just a little bit. Let's talk about this for a second. I want y'all to really pay attention to this because this blew my mind as I've been talking about and teaching on manifestation. Here we go. Perspective that you're sitting from, is it beneficial for everyone around or is it not? There's something that has to build up and there's something that needs to tear it down. Mm -hmm. You know, what we call the tearing of it down, we call that, we call it evil or bad, but that's the process of magnetism mm -hmm. or radiation. Radiation tears apart that which was uh, concentrically brought together through electric, through electric potential and electric. So radiation is the process through which the atomic particles and subatomic particles that are drawn together, which I've always considered as magnetism in the electrical field, right? Because opposites, you know, polar opposites draw. And polar opposites are the same thing, the same frequency, just a different octave or the, uh, you know, the opposing side. So when I say to you that opposites don't attract, it's truly the same thing that attracts. It's just the polar opposite, two sides of the same coin. That's what I mean by that, right? But interesting for him to say that it's magnetism and radiation, he puts the two together. I don't know if he ever thoroughly explains that anymore, but he says they're the same thing because electricity, and, and if you think about it, anything that's electrical seeks to just, it seeks to get into the, it, it, wa it, it wants to get to a source, right? It wants to get to the strongest point and it's drawn into this very strong center or vortex of a, a magnetic or electromagnetic field. <clears throat> so we're going to go further, but, but, but I, wow, this just, it, it started blowing my mind. Here we go. Force. Electricity is always seeking a higher pressure condition, trying to get to the center of the apex, whereas magnetism is spinning southwestward, trying to get out. And But the magnetism is necessary because unless it, it broke apart that which was collected together, you would never have any new material to rebuild again. Unless you allow it to tear itself, unless you break it apart, you're never going to have any new material to rebuild again. I want you to grab that for just one second. This is the reason why we do shadow work. This is the reason why we go deep within and we tear down everything that was built prior. This is the reason why I continue to challenge you, why you challenge yourself, and while I'm sure others are challenging you as well, to tear down belief systems and structures that you currently hold or that you've held on to for some of us for decades. For some of us for centuries and millennia as we keep on reincarnating with the same vibrations that we keep in reincarnating with the same karma. We keep reincarnating with the same programs. We keep you know, time after time after time, and we don't like release it like each go around, right? But we'll just talk about this lifetime for right now. So when we're in this space, right, if you do not tear things down, there is no new space for anything to get rebuilt. So we have to radiate, we have to release, we have to let these things go. Why? So that you, the whole process of manifestation and creation is this. You have an idea, a vision, a thought. It comes in, you create this in your imagination, just like a writer creates a character. This is good. Y'all got to pay attention here. This is good. Just like a writer creates a character, y'all give me some likes on these. On give me some likes on Facebook. On welcome Facebook. Hey Julia, how are you? I love him as well. Um, on Facebook, on YouTube, give me some likes over here on Rumble. 
Um, help us get this out into the algorithm. This is a really important conversation to have. So when we're in the process of creation, we create a character in our brain. I didn't see this till just now. So y'all follow along with me. Just like he said a few seconds ago that the writer that he takes on the essence of this character, he and allows the character to inhabit himself and the body that he's carrying around is just the clothing for the character. So there could be a new character over and over and over again, but the body is different. Okay. I mean, the body's the same, but the character on the inside is different. So just like these writers write a character that comes from their imagination. So should you be creating a character for you to play like a new role, same body. Now, if you want to change your body too, from what I hear, I think it's 282 or 285. I'll tell you, look up the frequency to lose weight. There is a frequency that helps your body process fat and lose weight. I kid you not. I just started listening to it. I'll let you know as soon as I keep on dropping this here, these here pounds, child. But anyway, so there is a character that your imagination then creates that's going to live out this new life, that's going to live out this new, have better relationships, uh, entrepreneurial opportunities, a better job, a better this, a better that, whoop de bam boom, thank you, ma'am. Okay? You're creating a character in your imagination and you're writing the script. Your higher self has already actually, you in conjunction with source, you've already actually written out the script, but you are spending the most of your lifetime now trying to figure out what the heck that was that you wrote down. You ever wrote something down somewhere and you wrote it on a piece of paper somewhere and you, you know, you put a note and you say, oh, I'm not going to forget this. Now I know I ain't the only one. And you wrote it down and child, I'll be gosh darn if a week later you go back looking for that piece of paper with that darn note, you can't find it nowhere right? Same thing. You wrote this before you came here. Only now you got to find a note. <laughs> okay. So what happens is during this time period where we are recreating our new lives, our imagination writes out a new script. The imagination writes out the script. So then when you can really see it, then you speak it out, right? As you speak it out, you begin to, you, your heart then begins to believe it a little bit more. The more you speak it, the more you believe it. Or when you really get good at it, you can kind of bypass the throat and let it just drop right down into your heart. Then what happens? The heart emits, it sets, it gets emotional, right? It gets a little Whitney Houston, I get so emotional, right? So it gets emotional. It sends out this energy, but it radiates. Y'all, if anybody knows Terrence, and I might have, I'm going to, I am, I'm going to send this to him. It radiates, because he blessed me so with this here. It radiates energy. And so what it does, as you are radiating and emitting this new frequency of this individual that you have written down here, and now you wish for your body, your being to inhabit it, inhabit, it radiates this energy out and destroys everything that's in its path. Why? Because it's got to make room for the new that you are attracting in because you are vibrating at a frequency. That frequency is higher and it's faster. So what does it want? It wants more good stuff. It wants the good stuff that you have imagined. So then you allow this to come in and that new person begins to inhabit you. And that's how you manifest your new life. My God. Hey, James, how are you? He, as well as Eddie Griffin, speak of this fun fact. Cat William, they're all extra hover witnesses. That's very true. Hey, Spiritual Focus 777, how are you? 
I'm catching up, guys. Thank you very much. Yes, please hit the like, and we appreciate you. We love you. Please hit that like. Please let people know we're talking about this. Please share this video later on with anybody that you feel like is really going to get blessed by it. This is this is some deep stuff. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yes. Your real new character. Absolutely. So the feeling is the secret. Yes. Your emotions, the energy you set in motions, that's deeper than a feeling. I have a feeling about something. My spidey senses is tangling. But when I'm emotional about something, when I have assigned a set level of energy to something that I am now going to set my my energy into motion surrounding, now it's more than a feeling. Now I've decided I'm about to create something. Right? Right? All right, here we go. Here we go, gang. And then that's the breathing in and the breathing out of universal purpose. Now, so at the end of the day, since the creator made all things mm -hmm. and everything came from the creator, right. there is nothing that is bad except what you, how you are perceiving it and whether it's beneficial to everyone around you because something needs to tear things apart. And if you want to be on the building side of it, mm -hmm. then you have a sustainable relationship with the universe because the universe loves to rebuild, but it also needs to tear apart at the same time. Right. And I often say that, you know, we do live in a world of duality, so it keeps equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, when you mention creator and universe, can you clarify who you consider the creator to be? Oh, well, I don't consider the creator to be any of the names that have been personified upon mm -hmm. it. Because if you think as above, so below, and everything in the universe mm -hmm. has an equal and opposite mate, even in our chemistry, every okay. element has an equal and opposite mate, like the opposite mate of, of oxygen mm -hmm. is a plus two and a minus two within that same octave is... Um, is beryllium. If oxygen is bonded with any other element, mm -hmm. the moment that it comes in contact with, with beryllium, mm -hmm. it will break that other bond wow. and immediately bond to beryllium because it's, it's equal and opposite mate. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and the, the oxygen is feminine because it's part of the expansive side, whereas beryllium is a masculine. So there's always this balance of masculine and feminine in the world that we see mm -hmm. and in everything that we do. So I was like, how can a male god produce a male son without a feminine deity. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Mm -hmm. You know, and the stories of Jewish folklore, I, I appreciate, you know, the Israelites and their story, mm -hmm. but they're not part of my history. Mm -hmm. So why am I subscribing to their deities? How have that been placed upon us? Why is it that yeah. black men who are not Jewish are getting circumcised mm -hmm. when we are not part of mm -hmm. that Israelite place? Why are we? Oops. Now, listen, y'all know, if y'all know me, y'all know this. You believe how you want to believe. I ain't got no problem with it. I'm presenting information. Right? I grew up Christian. I'm ordained. Um, I just think that there's bits and pieces of this. As we grow further into true Christ consciousness, as we grow into true Christ consciousness, right? Where the consciousness of love, the consciousness of peace, the consciousness of becoming at one and comfortable with the amount of the, the level of divinity of a divine being that you truly are, while not trying to usurp in any way, shape, form, or fashion, he says this beautifully. Not trying to usurp supremacy by any stretch of the imagination, but understanding and understanding that you are, I say this all the time, an aspect of the divine creator, mother, father, God. That as we expand that knowledge, it gives us, I feel I have a greater appreciation for Yeshua I have a greater appreciation, if we want to say that, for the Christ consciousness because I have a, a different 
perspective now by which I can begin to embody it because I'm not tethered. Hey, yo, sis, calm it down. That's Gemini. Um, I no longer am tethered to having to look at it strictly through, well, this male perspective that I know, especially being a mother, is not wholly and completely true. Because I did not create any of my three children on my own. And certainly their fathers did not. I can guarantee you that. Ain't they a one of them? Now I only got two baby daddies. But neither one of them laid down and had that baby. Nail one of them cheerings. I tell you that for sure, for sure. I want to catch up. I don't want to get you far behind. So Abraham Hicks. So somewhat like Abraham Hicks. Um, the difference though, right, between Esther Hicks channeling Abraham and our dear brother Terrence is he's not channeling an ex another entity that would be the mediumship like she gets taken over by abraham um the 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 spirit um the energy of abraham um whereas this is purely terence not a character in a book hello you and your feelings how are you yeah this is this is this is this is, this is, this is crazy. This is amazing. Here we go. Girl, I can't see. Uh, uh, no, what you're not going to do is mess with my beauty blender. Now watch out, sis. You kind of in the way. I can't. Dang it. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, gang. We cannot let this get into my computer. Okay. All right. Well, there went my water. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. I'm just a little wet. That's okay. I'll be all right. Here we go. Following their gods that they came up with, mm -hmm. you know. So are you saying distinctively that faith and science are different or is faith and science synonymous? Well, science is to explain natural phenomena. Okay. The whole point of science was to explain natural phenomena and it should coincide with what takes place in the observable universe. Mm -hmm. And that should strengthen one's faith. And that's why I said as above, so below. So if here, everything has an equal and opposite mate mm -hmm. and is, ne is necessary in order for the proliferation of life and the continuation of, of the death cycle that is just sleeping and then you refold again and you're reborn again. And I don't, so I'm, I've always, found it hard. I started off as a as a Christian. My mother raised us as Baptist and Methodist and mm -hmm. went through those walks. But then my father went to prison. When he came out of prison, he was a Muslim. So we became <laughs> Muslim yeah. until I was like 13 years old. And then there's this really cool brother named Yakub. You know, I really appreciated him. He had um, always had this this wonderful musk set to him mm -hmm. and order dashiki. And he was such a beautiful and kind person. And then one day I came home and my father and all of his friends were sitting around talking seriously. And I was like, what happened? Well, it turned out that Yakub, the gentleman, had cut the genitals off of someone, uh, a wino that had urinated on the mosque. Wow. And I was like, wow. I have, I didn't have children at that time, but I was mm -hmm. like, how can that God of love? Right have one you know because some uh, if my child urinated on my house there's no way i would cut his genitals off mm -hmm. so why is it that somebody would do that thinking right. that they're honoring right. the creator right. and i had to start rethinking things and then i became a jehovah's witness mm -hmm. uh, went through that for around 20 years and i began asking serious mm -hmm. questions you know if god had never caused it to rain until six thousand four thousand something years ago and never caused it to rain on this earth. So what happened? It never rained during the times of the, of the dinosaurs mm -hmm. when precipitation is part of the entire thing. And like it said, the Bible is supposed to be the inspired word of God. Therefore, right. if what you find one lie in there, then you have to call into question everything else that's been placed there. And I'm not sure that that is the history of the creator. Mm -hmm. And I think the creator is so much more expansive so than that. And the one thing that we all need to recognize 
perfection cannot create imperfection. Mm -hmm. It cannot make any immortality or eternal cannot create something that is non-eternal. Okay. You know, and can we now I will now I want to talk about that for just a second here. Because that's always something that I questioned, right? And we've questioned this on this channel. Like from the very beginning, even during even when I was like actively in the church. Okay, well, what happened between Genesis 1 1 and 1 2? How did God, who is the perfect God, who doesn't we right? There's a there, we have this saying in the in in the church world, and I think it's very true. I'm gonna have to change clothes. Um, I'm very wet now that we knocked over the water. Um we have the saying in the church that God don't make junk. Have y'all ever said that? Have y'all ever uttered those words or heard those words uttered that God don't make junk? I say all the time, you're wonderfully and beautifully created. So why would that which is perfect create something that which is imperfect? Now, some say, some theologians and other scholars will say that's because God wanted to give us, he didn't want robots, like this is the way I heard it. You all tell me if y'all heard the same way. He did, because at some point, the angel's uh, fate had been sealed because of the um, rebellion against God and a third of the angels went with Lucifer. And then uh, at that point, there was the division. Y'all can't come back here. That's what the story went, that y'all can't come back here. And so then their fates were sealed. And so then we were created so that we would choose him, choose to worship him. And yet, and yet, and yet, when Eve ate of the apple and gained the knowledge, right? Gained all the knowledge. Her eyes were open. And Adam really was when Adam did. When Adam ate the apple, after the both of them ate the apple, then they got kicked out of Eden. So you got mad and kicked them out of their home because they didn't obey. You kicked them out the house. I can't. I mean, I understand that sometimes as a parent, you have to do things. But was that such a serious offense? Was was that, was coming into the knowledge And and I believe now, and I think I I started believing it a long time ago, but now I have the vo vo vocabulary to speak it out. I believe that that then was this knowledge of their own deity, their own divinity, that they understood that they, you know, if we're going to go along with this and we're going to say that it's not an experiment, but that they then understood their own divinity, because even you fast forward a little bit further at the town of ba at the Tower of Babel, then um, the whole reason for that, and then the separation and division. So you cause division amongst this group of beings that you created because they got too. They came into too much knowledge, and they built. They were building a quote unquote tower so that they would eventually, and they were going to eventually reach you. First of all, if you're all knowing how the heck you didn't notice it happened. How, how, if you're all knowing, <laughs> if you're, I don't mean no harm y'all, but I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. I need to understand if you're an all an omniscient and omnipotent God, all knowing, all powerful. How you didn't know they was building this here tower? And why then would you separate them by language and then by race dispersing them that then ends up causing more 
dis- dissension amongst the people, amongst your creation. It just doesn't, it doesn't add up to me. So when he asked these questions, I'm like, yeah, I asked the same ones. It don't, it don't make sense to me. It just, it, the math ain't math. Then he can get into the math later on. Asking questions can be hard. Yes, but my point is just that we're all at some level. We've all been quote unquote indoctrinated. I just want people to like not get be so tied to the dogma and really come into relationship because it's a beautiful thing. I'd like to have a partner like that, that conversation. Absolutely. Yes. The book of Enoch was removed from the Bible as well as many other books. Um, Yeah. Oh, you do. I need to order hard copies of all those things. Um, let's see here. Sound like a man-made God. Yes. With human emotions. Or as we got into a bit of the discussion on Saturday night, we started talking about the Anunnaki and it being this all being a grand experiment, which I've been saying for a long time. (laughs) Oh gosh. Anyway. Um, yes, we're all going to break these chains together. I love it. I believe the God of the Bible was Anunnaki. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we're talking about. Hence, the original Bible says, make them in our image. And I used to counter when people would say, what were they saying? Oh, I used to, when, when people were had a really hard time with me talking about the, the level that we are gods, right? Even though that's what the Bible says. Um, I would go right directly to that. Let's make man in our own image. Let's us make we them or something like that. Well, then that would just mean to me, like, I mean, my children each have 50% of my DNA. So there's in a lot of ways, they're going to be of my image and my likeness. You could look at my oldest daughter. Yes, why would you make us imperfect and tell us to live perfectly? Yes. How did Adam come from Eve? Well. (laughs) There are a lot of people, there's a lot of there's some belief systems that say Adam came from Lilith and that Lilith was kind of like the original mother Mary of the entire human race. If you go to astral legends, that's been the best one that I've seen, or you study the tablets of Enkil, is it? Um, then it, that those tablets then do kind of, depict this whole entire um, experimentation situation where there was an Anunnaki that was impregnated in vitro with Adamu. Um, Also, yes, Adam could have come from Eve. You have to look, just look at Jesus coming from Mary. So it's very possible. We're going to get into all of that. I'm going to go to the Astral Legends one, too. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that, too. I really want to. Her love came before Eve, correct. Um. Yeah, well, Lilith wasn't necessarily considered the snake, but she was considered evil because... She wasn't submitting. You're right about that. <laughs> She's like, look, uh-uh, that ain't how this going down. I'm not submitting. Anyway, here we go. Let's keep going because <laughs> I'll be here all day, which makes sense why Jesus didn't have a father, right? He, right. He was considered what? The second Adam. That's another whole thing. You and your feelings, you don't open up a whole nother can of worms. Why was he considered the second Adam? Hmm. 
Mm -mm, don't do this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh man. Y'all pray for my computer. <laughs> yeah, another good platform. Um, I, we're gonna we're gonna get into all of that. We're gonna get on. Okay, let's continue to listen, child. This is only we we ain't even got through the first fifteen minutes. Oh my god! Here we go. Thank you, Red Violet. Yep, you continue to give me a like. Let's keep going. Everything inside the universe is alive. And what people don't recognize is that the entire universe is the creator. And we are part of that. So we are the creator within it. And when we do good, then God is good. But when we do bad, God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. But we are once you recognize the divinity within you, then the universe behaves as if you have the authority. And that's why it's so important to keep your word. And what Jesus was trying to tell everybody was that you are god right that's why it says god is that's good. a that's a very emphatic statement and i don't know if a lot of people are able to handle the statement and the essence of what it was intended but the reason i wanted you to clarify is because even when we've talked off screen you've referenced even with the book you're writing we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that uh you mentioned scriptures like daniel when you're showing yeah, the daniel, so. daniel yeah so when you reference those scriptures you're not saying that they're infallible no, you're just saying that there are other things outside that we need to consider. These are historical references within it. Like Jesus said, you know, um, we were all made in God's image. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look in the mirror, do you see God? And when God looks in the mirror, does God see you? Right. That's the question. At what point? And somebody told us we were born in sin. We were all of that. And that, you know, the desire to mate is a sinful thing. When a man is born with uh, in 1970, a healthy male produced um 1500 sperm per heartbeat mm -hmm. that is a that is a motivating factor towards getting out there and 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 proliferating oh, oh, no no in a minute but one of the things that's interesting we are 98.7 percent identical to simians or to chimpanzees okay. or to apes what's that percentage again 98.7 percent identical genetically and we only 1.3 percent there's only 1.3 percent differentiation between um between us and and the simians but how do they live mm -hmm. they live in um, a harem mm -hmm. because of producing 1500 sperm per heartbeat so that they're and the women the females recognize that that's okay. what's so how is it that as if we're 98.7 percent identical mm -hmm. to them why are we attempting to live completely isolated and not following those same rules of nature why are we trying to do the 1.3 percent that's a serious question. Yes. And as a female, <laughs> we've had so many issues with that because it, it sounds like polygamy. Um, and sounds like nature. It sounds like nature. 98.7. Polygamous. So, so my question to that would be, and this is something I pose to other people who are of that same thought, which is if it is in fact how we should be cohabitating, then how do we explain STDs when you're with multiple partners? If how do we how do we reconcile that? happening it's with, it's within what takes like does the simians does the chimpanzees walk around with stds no because they do not allow the females to go and cohabitate with other males uh -huh. outside of it stays within this mm -hmm. this community now the difference between us we are not in a position to carry out the natural order of things mm -hmm. because we are not self-sufficient right we're not working within our own mm -hmm. our own environment mm -hmm. so we have to ascribe to a different way of life like me yeah, I have I have my one and I don't have a desire to okay. be with anyone else because this is not the environment mm -hmm. in which you can do that. But I, okay. if it was great, if the, if I had the environment that facilitated the natural course, you know, I would love to have a few other individuals mm -hmm. helping with raising the family, okay. you know, but I at 55. You it's know, not, my not, appetite is that's a lot like, of work. You know, it's work. To, that's a lot I, of work. I can barely keep up with with my one now. And, exactly. and her sex drive because she's 47 now okay. has changed so now she wants to play and i'm like listen i was like 1500 sperm per heartbeat years listen. ago i'm not i don't think i'm there anymore that's a lot of work <laughs> that's my other thing <laughs> which is hilarious okay I, can we talk about that for a minute because i want to talk about not just the metaphysical but I, let's talk about the physical let's talk about that a little bit uh welcome bianca how are you my dear how are you 
Well, I don't think that you were created just to have. I, I let's not. That's why I want to talk about this. Let's not. Let's not crucify him on the cross for this one. Um, I don't think that we were created just to have sex. Um, I think that all he's just saying is that we, because he's about to get into a bit of a conversation now about how different toxins in our, um, that we take in, right. That we drink in, that we eat all these other things, how it's basically, um, it's killing us off as a race, um, as a human race. Okay. So he's just, he's talking about the natural, like, okay, this is how mammals live. And I've heard, I hear polygamists talk about it all the time, right? Um, how, you know, having multiple wives and yada, yada, skippy, skippy. Um, I do find it interesting that he blames STDs on women being with other men. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I'm like, um, and I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily know if apes and chimpanzees are going through, like, I don't know. Does anybody want to go and find out? Are the apes and the chimpanzees, is there a, a, a rash of stuff going on? I don't know, child. Um, I do know, though, in biblical times and in, in, in uh, earlier days, Men, there was more than one woman per man. But the, again, that was also because a lot of them got killed off in war and things like that. They were the hunters, so they got naturally killed off by, you know, other animals, you know, by, by animals and things. So I'm sure there's a number of reasons, you and your feelings. Now that's wild. So why would the women, so who would the women get the STDs from? Well, he's saying that basically if the woman sleeps with a bunch of nasty men, then that's where the STDs come from. So you can't blame that. How are you still going to blame the woman? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we go, we, we, Brother Terrence, I can't ride out with you on that one. I get the nature thing. I'm not trying to say that you don't understand nature, but I can't ride on that one. Like it's too much work to deal with one woman, okay? So but I'm just multiple is gonna be a lot of work. I'm just trying to exemplify the fact that um I get it that we are not living in a natural I get it under natural conditions, and we have a lot of problems associated with that. So, what would you say is your foundation as a man of where all of this massive information comes from? Your thought process, the way you think, what you receive, because I hear you talking about revelation a lot, but where do you attribute that? Like, where is that coming from? Because you don't think like the average person, obviously. No, because I don't identify with average. Yeah, you know, I, I don't identify mm -hmm. with that. I When I look in the mirror, I see the creator. Okay. You know, I don't see anything short mm -hmm. of the creator. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm. Mm -hmm. there's not one part of me that wasn't made from, from the creator. So there's not one part of me that's okay. not perfect. Okay. Now, maybe my perception and understanding yeah. isn't there because I've, I've, I've allowed myself to be influenced by other things. Mm -hmm. But I see myself in the most humble way as being directly from the creator. And I see everyone else and everything else as being directly from the creator, even the plastic that makes this up. Mm -hmm. That carbon mm -hmm. is still vibrating at the key of E, breathing in and breathing out. We look at this and call it dead. But that browning effect, browning effect right. is the life mm -hmm. principle continuing on in it. So when I recognize that this is alive, it recognize that I'm alive, and I recognize that this carries the same nature of the creator, then it recognized that in me. And so there's an equanimity, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I don't see myself above a piece of tissue or below the creator himself. So mm -hmm. there's a balance out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a very provoking mindset to have um, because of your extensive experience in life that most people don't get to do, you know, with acting and everything else. What would you say has been the most rewarding out of everything you've done? The most rewarding thing that's ever happened to me or that I've accomplished. That you've just done. Um, being able to define the entire electric field mm -hmm. or the plasmic, plasmic field mm -hmm. and patent it. Yeah. And the things that I discovered with that prove that the platonic solids 
which our entire infrastructure is built off, were only averages and approximations, and that all of the postulates and axioms they built off of are erroneous. Mm -hmm. And being able to present that, but also being given the blessing of defining the magnetic field, the feminine side, mm -hmm. and patenting those, mm -hmm. the expanding expansion or the unfolding of the yeah. universe, but then having being given the opportunity to define the neutral that sits between it or the constitution, which is the linchpin mm -hmm. that mitigates between the micro, which is the electric world, and the macro, which is the magnetic world. And so Terry's linchpin.com, that's where he explains. I'll, I'll put that down in the description box below. I did put in the description box below another one of his websites where you can download his free books. He puts a lot of this information. He put out the book on the flower of life. This was some years ago. And I wished I had reached out to him then because he was so much easier to get in touch with, um, to have on the channel at that point, because I was fascinated um, by that. Um, good night, Sister Michelle. Um, and uh, my poor computer. Um, but at any rate, uh, so going to this, the, he'll talk about how he basically deconstructed or realized that what we've built everything on this is why I said he literally destroyed the matrix, how he built ev how everything we built everything on, AKA the platonic solids are an approximation and it's just an estimate and it's not factual. And this works as a bridge, a common factor between. So having discovered and patenting the wow. um, uni grand unified field equation. Yeah and putting it into practice and building all of these new um, industries that have come from it, from transcendental lighting to tangential flight mm -hmm. um, to in super symmetrical systems. I've patented four super symmetrical systems and a super symmetrical system is it always aligns. That's how the universe behaves. And according to science, there are no super symmetrical right. systems because the platonic solids have a thing called discrete symmetry. And for everybody out there, the, I was just about the to say platonic about solids it. were um, five poly polygons that, mm -hmm. um, have that are based upon straight lines and flat place flat mm -hmm. planes um, and there are the uh, tetrahedron the hexahedron or the cube the octahedron mm -hmm. um, the dodecahedron and the icosahedron mm -hmm. now for our millennium since the days of pythagoras uh, and the days of plato these were the undisputed mm -hmm. you know fundamentals of god and they said that they pulled it out of the flower of life mm -hmm. now my biggest question well, another thing based on what's my greatest accomplishment right, right. would have been to question a uh, mathematical fallacy mm -hmm. that one times one equals one, <laughs> because how could an action times an action not have a reaction? Okay, let me, let me, let me about to go into this next thing. So did we grasp what he was talking about? So the tetrahedron is a basically three-dimensional triangle. Then comes the octahedron, which is the cube. Then the dodecahedron, which I believe is the pentagram or pentagon, like expanded out. Lord, please let this computer not be in a bad way because we got a little bit of something, something in it. Um, and then, um, and then there was one more that he stated anyway which i think is the 12 sided um anyway so these are the platonic solids upon which everything every everything is is been built and you can look that up um and with the pythagorean theorem theory and all of this like look at the platonic solids and get stop kitty please and get to know that a little bit so basically, because of the platonic solids and how there is an approximate symmetry, but not an exact symmetry, um, we have a problem because we've not been able to make anything precisely symmetrical. Only what he's saying, in, and you can find this, everything is based on things like the Fibonacci cycle and things like that, that that's not true, that that everything that is naturally occurring, not man-made, but everything that is naturally occurring is perfectly symmetrical, has perfect order to it. 
And so he, you'll hear him say, I don't know if he says it now or later, he has 97 different patents on everything from this plasma field to the in between. And to, it's insane the number of patents he has. So we're going to go a little bit further and then we're going to shut this down for today and we'll pick it back up at a good spot. So we're going to go a little further here to the other guys. You know, because every action has a natural reaction. So I was like, how did they come up with this um, irrational and an illogical set of things? If, if to multiply means to make more, then how can one times one equaling one be part of a multiplication table? It fails to satisfy the term multiply. So questioning that and in, in the first, second, third grade, mm -hmm. as I came along, mm -hmm. uh, that that courage towards curiosity mm -hmm. and an unbridled passion towards finding the truth, which therefore the Bible or any other book has to be held. You have to question it and make sure that everything that it says and purports to be is what it is. Because as a Jehovah's Witness, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, if my child would have been sick and needed blood, I would have, wouldn't have given him blood because right. of Genesis 9, 4 about not putting blood in your body. Mm -hmm. And then, but out there, we were told as witnesses, you got to stay away from astrology, stay away from astrology. And I'm like, why stay away from astrology? Why do I need, because they told the truth about Christmas, told the truth about Easter, told the truth about holidays, all of this stuff. But why stay away from astrology? Well, it turns out all religion has come from astrology and the astrology was astronomy. And they were trying to make sense of the heavens and how time passed and these, these bodies. And it turns out the sun going through the 12 constellations, they anthropomorphize those 12 constellations and they became mm -hmm. disciples. Mm -hmm. And there's every story, every culture from the Egyptians, mm -hmm. you know, to the Greeks, they had the same story of the son of God, uh, born from a virgin mm -hmm. that's betrayed by one of his disciples. He dies on the 21st and in three days he late, he rises later. Well, well, they say that, but you know, we, I mean, you know, I've, I consider myself, I call myself a believer, but I, I am under the umbrella of Christian. And there are a lot of erroneous doctrines that are in Christendom that don't, you know, purport what God actually has given us to examine. How do you kill your, how do you burn somebody for eternity for <laughs> something that they did for 30, 40 years without direction? It lacks it lacks justice and it lacks the thing we call love. There's nothing my child could do that would make me burn them forever. And then we got to think about God never breaks his laws of universal function in order to perform a miracle. Mm -hmm. That's not what happens. So I guess a person's flesh revolt grows back and they burn the next day, grows back. That sounds like something from science fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those things that if me, the best thing you could do for a child that's out of control, if you can't get them help is put them to sleep mm -hmm. so that they can't harm anybody else. But you would never continually torture somebody for something that forever, for something that they did for a few years. You would never do it. It lacks equanimity. And the universe is based upon balance. So when I asked all of those questions, mm -hmm. I never got the proper answer. So I had to go in search of because I would have put my life and my family's life on the line for mm -hmm. them. And I miss the days when I looked forward to um, a savior coming in and helping us. Mm -hmm. I miss those days because it must, was much easier, mm -hmm. but I recognize that we have to save ourselves. You have to be your own hero and act. Jesus didn't sit and wait for some uh, someone else to come and help. He got out and did what was necessary in order to educate and edify the people that he cared about. And as a result of that work, we have all of these wonderful ideas, you know, but now we've lost that spirit and it's time for us to get back into the spirit of what's right. Well, I, I... we had 27 minutes, 29 seconds. Wow. There was a lot right there to unpack. He's going to go, I think he goes a little bit further into the discussion about one times one equaling two. He may or may not, but on his website, there is also, um, there is also one times one equals two. That's another PDF, another book that he has. Um, we, we can touch a little bit on this, the con, the, 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 the concept of I, at one point I thought it was 13, but I recently have found out that there is a total of 15 messianic figures in all of human history in spiritual practices and beliefs. 
That's just, stop, kitty. That's just truth. One second. She just won't. You got to get off my, uh, underneath there before you knock this one over, too. Go ahead. Move, 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 move. Okay. Sorry, gang. Mm. Um, that's just the truth that there is. And if you research it, that there is. That doesn't, that to me doesn't negate Christianity or doesn't negate the Bible, doesn't negate, right, Christ consciousness. It doesn't negate any of that. But what it does show me is that this concept has been repeated throughout human history. And then I have to begin to say, for what purpose? And then I have to begin to then say, what am I to learn from it? What am I really, what, what are the truths that I'm meant to extract from it? And what, how does it apply to our current time and our current consciousness? If we can look at it from that perspective, um, first of all, we won't be judgmental of anyone that believes in a certain fashion. I loved how he just he just went on. He didn't tell her she was wrong from his perspective. He didn't berate her, none of that. He simply just stated his belief. He simply just stated as a as a parent that there was nothing that he that there his kids could do and that, that would cause an eternal burning and eternal torture. And I I'm hard pressed. I don't. Even if my children harmed me physically, mentally, emotionally, I don't think that I could do that. I think if I had to do something like out of some form of self defense, wow, that would hurt. That would hurt me to my core that I had to do that to my children. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't know that I'd ever come back from that. Oh, great. Anyway, sorry, my computer's making this odd noise. I've heard that noise before in another situation. We're just going to believe that Everything will dry out and everything will be fine. It's going to be okay. All right. We have been on here for almost an hour and a half. I wanted to break this up. This has been really amazing. I've really enjoyed having you all here. Thank you so very much. Um, I, I will be posting in the community and elsewhere. Um, I have finally, <laughs> believe it or not, we have finally launched our mastermind and I'm going to put the, uh, there's the information, there's a paragraph about it down below in the description box on all platforms. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this one. Um, it is called the Soul Fire Syndicate Mastermind. And uh, I've finally been able to get everything, uh, I shouldn't say everything. You're going to have the opportunity to look at, to utilize, to be a part of a mastermind of people that are all transformational leaders, healers, and such. And you're going to have the resources made available to you to create your own transformational business. Um, and I have, it's a group. So it's all of us together. I've created a separate community as well. So off of any other platform so that we could chat with each other. You can create joint ventures. You can um, create collaborations, all sorts of great stuff. And so we've, I've got this landing page. I just put it in the chat if you want to um, take a part in this. Um, and also you can just go to this landing page and, and, and do this. There is also on YouTube, I have a YouTube store. You can do the 197 per month 
um, right there on YouTube throughout through the YouTube store. You can go to Shopify and sign up there or just to this website. You're going to get weekly group coaching, a private community, my LBA 2.0 course that I'm actually updating again for to handle AI and how to utilize the various AI programs. Um, you're going to get VIP access to all of my virtual events and a 20% discount on all my live events. And you get all of that for just $197 a month. Honestly, this is a $2,000 a month value because of all of what you get, like literally start to finish, you're going to be able to create your business. Everything from your social media to your sales to creating virtual events and all of that. You're going to get all access to all of that. And it's just $197 a month. Um, we have two group calls a week. You can attend both or just one. And if you want to just, if you want to um, save even more money, it's one nineteen ninety seven for one year. So you, you get two months for free that way as well. So this is an amazing investment into your future. So feel free to go there. Um, our first meeting is tomorrow evening um, at 7.30 Eastern. So it, it, when I come live, I'll be coming live a little sooner um, than, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Either I'll come live later or I'll go, I'm not sure, but we're going to keep digging into this. Um, so it's the first meeting is tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then the next meeting and every week thereafter as well will be at 10:30 uh, a.m. on Thursday morning. So go there, and if you want to become an affiliate and also help others to um, be able to partake in this as well, let me know. Okay, let me know. We are be looking for affiliates as well. A James says, I think he took that route when speaking about disease because she was trying. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, I think I think that was a legitimate question to ask. Um, but anyway, so guys, go over there, um, check it out, and we're getting started. And uh, I want to see each and every one of you that wants to build a business, and maybe you've wanted to work with me in the past but it was just not quite financially feasible. So this is my way of making it financially feasible for everyone. All right. We got to get on out of here guys. Okay. I've so enjoyed you. Uh, we'll, I know this was supposed to be messy Monday, but I kind of like this Monday. Um, so feel free to, to get, leave me some comments and share this. And we're going to keep going through the rest of this interview and really dig in deep. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. I love you guys so much. Namaste. We'll see you soon. Bye.